Hey everyone, we get to talk today a little bit about PlayStation 5 and uh, some maybe troubling uh, signs for what people were hoping the PlayStation 5 would be capable of uh, and why it might not matter. I don't know. We'll get into that. But before we do, before we do, I got to remind you that we are giving away a copy of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. All you have to do to enter the contest is to comment on this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon. Also, we are on our road to 50,000 subscribers. If we hit 50K before the month of November 2020, we will be giving away an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, or a Nintendo Switch to one lucky winner. Uh, if we hit 50K after that, we'll still do something special for it, but it won't be quite the big uh, launch system celebration uh, that I'm hoping it will become. That being said, let's get into the news. And this comes from a guy on Twitter who is actually a game developer. Um, he goes by at Aesthetic Gamer One. Uh, his name is Ryan. Uh, he works for Ya Gameworks, uh, it, who you know made uh, games like Cryptic and stuff like that. Uh, so kind of an indie dev, but has worked in the industry for a little while. And uh, he's got some connections. And somebody on Twitter asked him, um, this at Diego 70884986 asked him, any news about the performance of PlayStation 5 uh, on Capcom's graphic engine? Because Capcom, as we all know, was actually one of the reasons that Nintendo doubled the RAM in Switch, even though Capcom ended up not really bringing much over. Anyways, who knows? Maybe there's a Monster Hunter or something in the works. I don't know. It could be something. Uh, but he had a long uh, little tw Twitter thread here, three tweets. Um, explaining what he's heard from Capcom's side of things. Uh, but let's just get into it because this doesn't sound great for Sony. Um, but again, things aren't sounding great for Microsoft right now either. Something's up with these next-gen systems. Uh, but let's get into Sony here first. It says, I'm going to hate myself later for responding to this so I can feel it. People attracted to this sort of topic are horribly toxic. But a lot of people misinterpreted what I said, which is partially my fault. Of course, Resident Evil 8 will run fine on launch. That was never a question by me. And this is in response to an earlier tweet that Diego was responding to. But people should be ready for the real possibility that the PS5 is going to end up being more expensive console between the two. I'm trying not to say much here as I was asked not to, but prepare yourself, which does put Xbox X in a position that it'll be the less expensive and more powerful console. I used Resident Evil 8 as an example, but I've heard from other devs that PlayStation 5 struggles with 4K games in particular. So you'll see a lot of fake 4K. That doesn't matter to some, but get ready for that too. Xbox X doesn't have the same problem. So what he's basically saying is in direct comparison on the developer side, especially for Resident Evil 8 uh, and the Capcom's uh, game engine in particular, that the PlayStation 5 really, really struggles running native 4K, uh, especially if you probably want 60 FPS. It, it, it's it's just, it's not that it's not possible. It's that you really have to dial back the game to, to do that, where you don't actually have to do that on the Xbox X. And it's curious because uh, Xbox Series X, of course, is what he means. And it's curious here because there is technically a power gap between the xbox series x and the playstation 5 while the playstation 5 might have the faster of the of the ssds uh everything else is basically leaning xbox series x's way they have a faster cpu they have a more consistent faster paced uh gpu and it allows them to get, attain a higher performance level and that performance level difference which is almost almost two full teraflops on the GPU side, uh, is definitely enough to make a difference in the resolution. Now, remember, resolution is not the be-all, end-all. Uh, th this doesn't mean that suddenly Sony's games are not going to be any good. That's that's just hogwash. Anyone who's shilling out there that, that Sony's in trouble and, you know, they, they can't do 4K, like, let's just be honest here. Most people are not going to notice a difference between a checkerboard-rendered, upscaled 4K game uh, versus a non, you know, a native 4K game. Most people... Most consumers are not going to know the difference. Even if you got that big 65, 75-inch TV, uh, most people are not going to see the difference. Uh, but I'm obviously not most people. I do notice resolution differences, uh, and I'll be able to tell personally. But it doesn't mean the games are going to be bad. We've already seen checkerboard rendering. Uh, in you know, just, That's just one technique. There's other techniques as well uh, in this current generation. Um, where uh, it, it takes a, a, an image on like you know the Xbox One X or the PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, and then you know makes it into you know quote unquote 4K, but it's not really 4K. 
Uh, we've seen this with Assassin's Creed and some other games. So I think that uh, it, it is interesting uh, that on the developer side, it definitely appears that the Xbox Series X, that power difference matters on development side, maybe more so than the SSD speed difference, uh, at least for multi-platform games. So it definitely looks like um, the Xbox Series X has a massive advantage over the PlayStation 5, uh, and that's that, that's pretty interesting. This is obviously in addition to the, the the news that came up before, where you know PlayStation 4 controllers work on a PlayStation 5, but won't work with PlayStation 5 made games. Uh, not true with Microsoft. Granted, there is a bigger difference between the DualSense controller and the DualShock controller than there is between the Xbox, you know one or xbox series uh x controller versus the xbox one there actually isn't that much of a difference between those controllers at all uh which is fine as they say don't fix you know don't don't fix what isn't broken uh xbox has been lauded for their controllers for quite some time so why fix it you know sony was lauded as well so they stuck with the dual shock design for a long time now there is bad news on microsoft's side of the aisle of course uh if you haven't heard i don't know how you haven't at this point halo infinite uh, is delayed to 2021 uh, they, they put out a post, 343 put out a post talking about, you know, needing to, to meet expectations and, and do more work on the game. And people view this as supporting uh, the rumors out there that there was development hell w w with Halo Infinite, uh, which haven't been substantiated by anyone, by the way. Uh, I have to throw that out there. There actually is no real evidence that there was development issues other than the delay. Now, it's interesting with that delay because literally it was a month ago xbox and phil spencer were adamant this is coming out on launch uh so to see that change a month later makes me feel like it's the public backlash that that made it happen um i've heard some things behind the scenes i'm not going to get dabbled too much into it because i don't want to get people in trouble but uh I, what i will say is it sounds like the backlash over the visuals uh really hit 343 and microsoft hard so hard they're willing to delay the game to try to make it more visually appealing uh, the next time that they show it. So, uh, yeah, that seems to be uh, what's going on, at least. Uh, and, I, and I feel like the evidence supports that as well. Like People feel like, oh, it's being delayed. That means there's development issues. I'm like, no, the game's probably ready to go right now. It's just, hey, there was a huge backlash over the visuals. They're going to do something about that because this is their tentpole franchise at Microsoft. They're not going to let their tentpole franchise release at, when people think it looks ugly. Uh, I didn't really think it looked as bad as people made it out to be, but I also recognize that it was an Xbox One game originally, not a next-gen game. So, uh, you know, to me, it's kind of like complaining that Breath of the Wild didn't look next-gen because it was a Wii U game. I, you know, what, what am I supposed to complain about there? Now, that being said, uh, this is a very, very interesting because obviously they talk about the price difference here. And how PlayStation 5 is actually going to be more expensive uh, than the Xbox Series X. And that he can't really go into details because he's not supposed to. He doesn't want to get anyone in trouble. But I find that very, very interesting that, that uh, some dev developers, I guess, already know what the cost of the platforms are going to be for the end consumer. And uh, it, it's crazy to me to think that the more powerful system is going to be cheaper again. It actually happened this current generation. PlayStation 4 was more powerful than the Xbox One. And it was $100 cheaper at launch. Granted, it was because Microsoft forced Connect in the box, but still, it was the cheaper system and the more powerful one. And it appears like for a second generation in a row, the technically more powerful system is going to end up being cheaper. Won't go into what those prices are. Are we talking $499 PlayStation 5 versus a $399 uh, Xbox Series X? Are we talking a $399 PlayStation 5 versus a $299 Xbox Series X. I, you know, is Microsoft going to be that aggressive with the pricing? Remember, Microsoft can be really aggressive with pricing because they don't need uh, to make money on the systems they sell because the money that they make all comes from subscription services like Game Pass. And obviously, they have a beta of xCloud actually coming on an Android today or tomorrow uh, for Game Pass Ultimate members. Uh, so, you know, Microsoft is already starting to test that to get it out in the market this holiday. So, yeah, Microsoft's got a completely different approach. Now, obviously, there's been concerns over uh, what with Halo Infinite delayed. What's Microsoft got in, uh, you know, it, it slotted in for launch? Um, I have heard that there is something else uh, that Microsoft kind of, I guess, had kind of like a backup plan um, game that they could bring out. It won't, nothing's going to be as big as Halo for them. So, let's just, you know, put the kibosh right there. The, nothing really replaces Halo Infinite. It, it, it's like... Uh, you know, Nintendo's got multiple IPs in the barrel they could throw out there at launch, you know, whether it's Zelda, whether it's Mario, um, you can get a Mario Kart out there. Those are really the two big franchises. They could have a Pokemon game at launch now based on, you know, the fact that Pokemon games come to their main systems. But, um... I do think that uh, Microsoft's going to have something. It just might not be super impressive. But 
what, what I, I got to caution people on is, do you guys remember the launch of PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One? I mean, what were the killer apps back then? What, Rise, Son of Rome? What, you know, a, a, a new uh, Far Cry or whatever? Or what, what was it? What was that game? Uh, Fallout? No, not a Fallout game. I keep forgetting. What was the Kill Zone? That's right. It was a Kill Zone game on PlayStation 4. Those were the tentpole launch games for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And we're supposed to freak out because Halo Infinite's not going to be there. We're supposed to freak out because, you know, maybe Sony doesn't have, you know, Sony's got the, the Spider Man game, right? So that's like this big deal, this Miles Morales game. And that's great. It is a big deal. But it's also, you know, I. I I guess it, it's we just came off a generation that didn't have any killer apps for a long time. So I don't know why we're freaking out here. I do think that no matter what, what advantages the Xbox Series X has, it's not going to sell as well as the PlayStation 5. Um, Sony has a lot of momentum in a lot of markets. I do think the Xbox Series X is going to sell really well in the United States, however. And I think that's uh, the market that, that Microsoft personally uh, worries about the most anyways. They want to own the, United, the U.S. market over PlayStation 5. Um, but obviously they would love to, uh, you know, extend their reach into, uh, Europe and, and the Asian countries, uh, and then really try to get into Japan if they can. But, uh, they, they've struggled penetrating Japan for some time. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll see if they could pull that off. Maybe X clouds their way into there. I don't know, but, um, it's undeniable that there's different approaches here. Um, because even though, uh, Xbox series X is more powerful now, it sounds like it's going to be the cheaper system. Um, it sounds like it's going to be able to run games in, in true 4k way more often than PlayStation five can. Uh, and, uh, they have the, one of the greatest deals in, in gaming and game pass where you can buy this pass, for, you know, for one fee per year or a, a smaller fee per month and get access to all of the exclusive games, uh, dating back to the Xbox one library. And moving forward, day one on the Xbox Series X, uh, plus they're adding thir great third-party games in uh, here and there as well. It's almost becoming like a Netflix uh, kind of delivery of games. Uh, you know, even though it's not streaming. You know, back when Netflix used to send send out DVDs and you could rent things and all that. Well, hey, here you're not renting; you just get it as long as you're subscribed. So I like uh, that strategy. And obviously, uh, Sony seems to be going more of the traditional route. Uh, we're going to sell packaged goods uh, and digital goods. And we're not going to offer a cheap way to get all our stuff. Uh, and to be fair, Sony is technically the market leader in home consoles. Uh, so they are going to do what they're going to do because it's proven. Uh, and they're going to keep doing it, I think, until it doesn't work anymore. And I, I think it's going to work just fine this generation. Uh, now, we could get into the Nintendo, but I actually have a separate video I'll be doing on them. Uh, so we'll we'll get into some of the stuff going on with that. But I just really wanted to talk about this because it's it's a interesting point thrown out there by an, uh, what, what appears to be a developer he's also a moderator at reset era for anyone who actually thinks that matters um so yeah i don't know you guys let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below obviously commenting liking subscribing hitting that bell icon gets you an entry into our giveaway uh let's keep spreading this stuff around let's get to 50k because i i would really really want to run that giveaway for you guys all right thank you so much for tuning in and i'm gonna catch each and every one of you in the next video